Hello Year 10, hopefully you're all keeping well. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about limits of accuracy or error intervals as they're sometimes called. I know we touched on this briefly in class before it all shut down, so hopefully you'll be able to remember it and pick it up pretty quickly. So limits of accuracy really are nothing more than, than the opposite of rounding. If you think of it like that, then, then it makes it a bit, a bit clearer. So let's start with an example. That's probably the easiest thing. Um, I'm given the value of seven centimetres. And I'm told that that is a measurement someone's taken that has been rounded to the nearest centimetre. And I want to work out how accurate that might be. So I need to work out what this true value could have been if the person who was measuring it could have done it more accurately. Okay. So in order for something to be rounded to seven centimetres, to the nearest centimetre, it could have been, for example, 6.9 which would round up to 7, it could have been 7.2, that would round down to 7, but it couldn't have been 7.8, for example, because that would round up to 8. So we know that there must be a limit to what the actual answer could have been. So we're going to call our, set, our true value x. We know that the smallest amount it could have been is the smallest value that would round up to 7. Well, if it was 6.4, it would round down to 6. So the smallest value that would round up to 7 is 6.5. So we say that because this value could have been 6.5 and this is the smallest value, this is our lower bound of the true value of the measurement. Now, conversely, on the other side of the scale, if the true measurement was 7.5, that would be the smallest amount that would round up to 8. So it can't have been 7.5. It must have been smaller than that. But it could be anything smaller than that. So it could have been 7.4999999999. And mathematically, that's a bit of a nightmare. So what we say is that the upper bound is 7.5. And I know that rounds up to 8, so it doesn't really make sense, but bear with me. So that's your upper bound. But when we're writing our error interval, which is what this is with our inequalities, we make sure this one doesn't have an equal sign on it because we're saying it can't be 7.5, but it can be anything less than that, even if it's 7.499999999. So this is your lower bound. This is your upper bound. This one always has an equals. This one never does. And this is your error interval. One more thing to think about. We're told that they've rounded to the nearest centimetre. Our error interval is always going to be the same width as um, the accuracy that you're measuring to. So if you did 7.5 minus 6.5, you'd get 1, and we're rounding to 1 centimetre. So this range has to be the same as this. OK, so let's do another couple of examples, and then I'll stop banging up for a bit. Second example. Someone's done some measuring. They've measured something to be 18.2 metres. And they've measured to the nearest decimal place. Okay. So what is our error interval here? What is the limit of accuracy of this actual measurement? So this is their measurement. We're going to call the actual measurement x. So what would round to one decimal place to 18.2? Well, 18.1 wouldn't, because that's already rounded to one decimal place. That's going to be too small. Um, 18.19, for example, would round up to 18.2. So that must be in the range somewhere. But the smallest amount that would round up to 18.2 would be 18.15. Remember, this one will always have a, they'll both always have a 5 involved, because that's halfway through the numbers. 18.15 rounded to one decimal place would become 18.2. Anything smaller than that 
would round down to 18.1. So that's our lower bound. I'm just going to call it LB this time, being lazy. The upper bound, well, 18.25, but it can't really be that because that would round up to 18.3. But that is the smallest amount that would round up to 18.3. So if we keep our inequality without the equal sign, keep it strict, then we're okay to say that this is our upper bound. So remember, equals there, no equals there, lower bound, upper bound. The range of this should be one decimal place. So if I did that, take away that, I should get 0.1 which I think you can probably work out is right. Okay, so this is our error interval, lower bound, upper bound. Okay. One more example, and I'll let you get on with the exercises for lesson two. So 2,800 miles is what someone's measured, and that's been rounded to two significant figures. Now I know you all love these. So the 8 is the second significant figure, so that's the bit that it's been rounded to. So in order to work out the error interval, we need to work out what would have rounded this to an 8. Again, let's call it x. Let's get our inequalities set up, so we know it's going to look like that. What's going to round up to 2,800? To the nearest 100, which is the place value that that is in, hundreds. Well, it's going to be 2,750. 2750 would round up to 2800, but 2850 would round up to 2900. So it can't be that, but it can be everything strictly less than that. So lower bound, upper bound, error interval. So hopefully now you are all set to have a go at the questions on lesson two. The table is the main part of the exercise. The questions, some of them are quite tricky. Don't worry too much, use the answers if you can. The main part that I need to see you be able to do is the table. So good luck.